Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Jesse, and then in today's tutorial, we we'll learn about how to use one of Julia's package, data frames, to do more of data analysis, right? Cool. So we're doing some of the things we need to cover in the other tutorial. So first of all, you just need this package, pkg.add data frames. If you don't have it, if you already have it, you just go straight away with using data frames to be able to have access to that package, right? Also, we will need this package, pkg.add request. If you don't have it, this package will help us to make it HTTP request to a URL or a website to fetch data from it. Okay, so that is why we are using it. Now let's move on to some of the things. So we can just use who's to check for all the functions of this data package, right? All the models and functionalities of this package. So data frames. So it's going to list all the functions that this package comes with so that you'll be able to see what you can do with it. There are several things we can do. So some of these, these are some of them. So these are the macros you can work with. And then these are the normal functions that it comes with. There are several of them. Okay, so that is nice. So now let's see how to read a data table or to read a data frame. So first of all, we store it as df, then go with read table. So this package data frames allows you to use just one function read tables. It is very powerful to be able to read any format of file, right? And this whether it is CSV. TSV or test editor. So we're we'll checking them. So I already have my iris data set CSV. So the iris can be gotten from here. You can just set iris data set. So that is what I have already downloaded. So when we read it, it's going to list everything perfectly for us, which is quite nice. So see that that's listed it nice together with the column header and then all of them nice. Okay. So let's see some other things. In case you haven't a delimiter, you have a different file and then once you read it, which is a test file, TST file. So there's another way. So let's call it that. Uh, read. Let's make it like this. The DFTST. That is the file is a TST file. So read table, not tables. And then I have a, a file which is going to be you know below. So it is TST. So this file, if I want to read it, I can just use the same format. And you see that it has read this TST file for us, which is quite nice. That's read it for us nicely but this format is not very good for us to use so we can actually separate in such a way that you need to read it well like the normal table so let me copy this one and then to do that you just go with this right i'm going to add the delimiter so to add a delimiter just go with separator say let me break it to the top so that you can see it well separator right and then it goes with this then into this if you see that this one is a bar right so you can actually or a pipe so you can just make it like this and it's going to read it again and then as a pipe for us separating it perfectly just like nine so in case it was a space you can just use the same thing in case it is a comma you can just use this comma so this one because it was already a pipe just a pipe we just that's why we use this format so it's going to read it nicely for us which is quite nice so we, now you can be able to analyze it well so let's see if you have a file that is far away it's on a different website and then you want to read it so to reading a file reading a uh, reading the table <laughs> see what i've written table from a url so we have a url let's see how to be able to read a table that you have on a website straight away so most of it, it requires a request, right? Which I've already downloaded using this format. So let, now let's call it as first of all, let's make a response to it. So we're going to use it request. So request, right? And then use get streaming. And then inside this get streaming, you're going to put your URL that you want to. So we have this URL that you'll be using. And then this bit dot lee slash chip all this right so this is it so we are going to be making a request to get the data from this website right so it's going to send a request to that, that place if it's alive and then after that i'm going to store we are, we are storing everything inside this response rsp and i'm going to read the response with the read table so let's call it df response that has actually made a response to it perfectly. So it is made by Kent Markham, who is a very nice guy. Okay, so df underscore rest, right? 
that's where you're going to store it, storing it so read table and then you're going to pass the response to it so response so the moment you pass this response so it's going to fetch the data for us but there's another way because of how the data is you just read only the first row so n rows right and it's going to read one so it's going to read only the first row for us which is quite simple so it such as perfectly read the first row so that's one of the so in case you have your data in your website you can just use this format of request.getStreaming and then you read it you store it inside the variable and read it with the read table okay let's see how to also read a file for, for of a specific or a selected number of rows so we're using the same thing df read table the one that we had for the first time so read table right and then iris the iris that we had first which was our data set so iris the csv comma separated value and then n rows so the n rows is going to give us the number of rows i want to read so i want to read only 10 so if i do it like this it's going to just read only the number of 10 so let's call it number 10 right so that it's separated so you see that that's read only the first 10 for us so that's another way you can, of reading it either you can load the entire file or you can just load only the first 10 rows from the with, with the read table function straight away so that is another way to do that so just the 10 okay let's see how to read with missing, missing files so in case you have any missing values like not available, non, non applicable, and you can just read it the same way. So df underscore missing, right? That is the data for that, that I'm missing. And then we're going to call it as read table, table, right? Then df, then the data that you want to read. So iris, call it, let's call it data dot csv. That is an example. And then we're just going to put it inside this format of any string so non available or non applicable strings and then into this vector we're going to put all the formats so na it can be na it can be n a like this or it can be depending on the, how it has been done right any like this or it can actually be missing so in this format it's going to read it like this for us so it's going to read and then read together with all this non available perfect okay so let's move on to some of the things you can also do so these are the main things you can do with it so let's see how to do the normal aspect of basics of after loading your data so how do you read the print the first five rows so just go ahead which is these are the normal basis and it's going to print the first five rows if you want to read the next five rows see that the next you want to print the first five rows with the head and then you can also do the same thing for a specific number head df let's say 10 right it's going to print the first 10 for us which is another way you can also do it right if you want to check for the last to print the last rows in the data frame just go with tail df right and it's going to print the last values see that the last six values again if you want to do the same thing the last 10 values you can just make it df and then 10 and then it's going to print the last 10 values which is quite nice so that you can actually know that you have uh, that's already read everything of it every data inside our data frame so let's see some of the other things can also do and also use describe right to describe the entire data frame which will give you a summary of everything the mean the median the mode right so it has given us the mean all these statistics perfect so that's one of the ways you can also do it another thing you can also do is that it's going to calculate for each and every of the rows so i'm going too far another thing you can also do is that like you can also check for the size of of a specific data frame so to do that you can just go with size df so this size the same as shape in python so it's going to give us the size give us the number of columns right which is the five and the number of rows so it is rows and then the columns so in the same way if you want to check with the length of the columns you can just use the same thing as see if i want to check with the length of the columns i'll just go with length and then df it's going to print the length of the columns i also want to check see that that's printed for us if i also want to check for the length of the number of rows i just go with n rows right this is n row so n row not n rows the moment you print n rows is 
is when you are reading from a data table for example like read table right then whatever you want to put the iris csv this is where you use the n rows right this will be but if you want to read read this particular function just go with n row so df and then it's going to print it which is 150 and then we can also do the same thing for the columns so n columns so n call right then df and it's going to print the number of columns so this is a this is a combination of the n rows so df is just like the com combination of n rows right and then n calls so that is it so it's going to print the rows in the column that's how this one is like okay, thank you for watching if you have any question or contribution you can put it inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit and then please don't forget to subscribe stay blessed